In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to make your interior design business more sustainable. I think it's an important place to start to think about how damaging the construction industry is. And I think a lot of interior designers um, don't want to really know how wasteful uh, we or our industry is. I think it's important to note that I'm not going to be talking about how to make your projects more sustainable because there's already a lot of resources uh, on how to make your projects more sustainable sustainable but um, when it comes to your interior design business I think there are little things that we can do every single day that really are our decisions as designers and I think this is where you can make a big difference so these are really simple things um, I would choose one and aim to do it really really well and see how many of these possibly you can start to impact um, and influence in your work. And let's see if we can make a little bit of a difference, every single one of us. Reusing and upcycling existing items. I think this is an interesting one because um, in the past it was really easy to just throw everything away or sell it and, um, and just start again. And a lot of people have this mentality Obviously, we all know that this is not a really great way uh, to uh, uh, to move forward as designers because it's really, really wasteful, especially if there's this kind of um, throwaway mentality or fast fashion. And I think um, including an assessment of what the client already has uh, is a really important uh, thing to include in your design services if, um, uh, if you really just take a little bit of a little bit of time to consider it at the at the outset i think a lot of clients might come to you with furniture that they would like to use already and i think that's really really great but it's it's amazing how many interior designers i've come across that think oh now i have to include this horrendous sofa that the client already had and i appreciate that as a designer that might be a little bit of a nuisance for us however um it's up to you to, what we do is solve problems in our work. So if you can solve the problem of how to make that, that sofa that you dislike uh, look absolutely fantastic, uh, that makes you a better designer. It also is better for the planet and um, helps your client see how uh, much uh, or how worth you are, your weight in gold, if that makes sense. So um, for a lot of us, um, it's, it doesn't come easily. I'm not a natural person who does DIY or upcycle things because um, typically for me, it's my RSI. I did my, my fair bit uh, as when I was younger. But now as I'm older, this stuff isn't very uh, practical for me because I physically cannot do things myself. But if you are one of those designers who is into DIY, this could be another uh, thing you can add to your services. So by upcycling bespoke pieces of furniture, and thinking about um, how you can reuse them for existing clients, or if you have enough space to store uh, uh, select pieces, you might be able to sell them online um, as an alternative income, or you could also um, save them for future projects. Buying better quality. This is a really, it's, it's a hard one because we try to balance our client's budget anyway, but the influence that we can have as designers are helping our clients see the um, the value in proposing higher quality, longer lasting materials uh, for things that are going to hopefully withstand the length of or the life of the building. And, you know, what these are the things I'm talking about, like high quality uh, furniture, high quality uh, finishes such as natural uh, timber, flooring, even parquet, but uh, uh, made from uh, engineered or solid wood. Um, so thinking about things that will last a long time. And I know that, once again, these are not cheap things. They're things that they are an investment. And these may uh, be things that might... Uh, skew the balance of a project because when a client says I want this look and um, it's the you know the chevron look that um, everyone's uh, wanted at a particular time and you're like great I can do that with uh, 
uh, with a parquet or like a low cost LVT. And that might be acceptable for a, uh, for a period of time, but until, um, you know, the next person moves in and we all know that the grey phase is over and um, now uh, the new uh, uh, colours are coming in and these fashions of colours can equally, like very, very easily date your building. And because of that, people will look in and think, oh, that's got to go. It's just, it makes this whole space look old. And by having made that decision in the first place to go with something that was, um, and I'm not saying that this is always uh, the scenario, this is just one example, in, uh, you know, using a whole trendy colour palette that is going to date over time might be uh, the wrong decision for that building because uh, the, uh, either if it was for sale or um, if the family is going to be living there for a longer period of time, every five to ten years, they might want to change it because it's already going to be looking dated. But if you've ever walked into a historic property and you look at that floor that's been there for years, it's undoubtedly, we all know it, we've all felt it, we know it's beautiful and we know how much worth that floor has. It would be blasphemous to change it. And so because of that, you almost want to have that attitude towards those things that are long lasting in a building where you walk in and these things remain because they're that beautiful, because we see the natural materials before because we've, uh, the person before us has invested in those and that's why, for example, you bought the property in the first place or you could see the value in using those um, and leaving them rather than changing them. Reusing, recycling or upcycling packaging. As a designer who does do installs, uh, I just find packaging unbelievably wasteful and this is something that I think is really hard from our side to influence but I think if more designers do start to speak to manufacturers about packaging and deliveries and um, resor uh, uh, sending um, furniture and items and even samples by post it's uh, the amount of waste that comes with this is just it's amazing and it's up to us how we deal with this but there are certain things that you can implement just really daily by just changing some things. And yes, it might take a little bit, bit of getting used to because we're used to that kind of, you know, luxurious thing where I can give someone a call and get a sample delivered the next day. But I think it's worthwhile considering whether that is the right thing to do, whether you really need that sample firstly, um, or whether you can do a one day where you go to your, your manufacturers and do a sample day and start looking and then you can take high... Uh, quality photographs yourself and make decisions uh, at the manufacturers or the tile company, uh, whatever uh, it is that you're working on, and then make those decisions in one day. Um, or, I mean, I know this, like I said, takes a little bit of getting used to it because a lot of designers collect all the samples, then play around with samples and come back to them weeks and weeks and, and, and look at them. This is still possible to do and it kind of affects your workflow. But instead of having hundreds of samples, maybe we already collect three or four maximum that um, that we're already looking at and then find a way to re um, return those samples once we've made a decision or use those um, uh, once the client uses them, but maybe it could be used in the project. So packaging isn't something we can, I mean, we can have a little bit of a say of it, uh, say it in um, in terms of uh, when we're requesting furniture delivered. I appreciate that when something arrives damaged that it creates another problem. So there are things that we need to weigh up here and it's not an easy solution. But if you've got ways uh, that you can make a change, even little things like, for example, just a sample, um, all of these things compound and they add up and they make a difference. So I think it is worthwhile considering it. If you deal with companies who uh, are more innovative and find ways to uh, le uh, use less packaging or recycled packaging um, or take back the packaging once they've delivered it and you've signed off the item, there are all of these ideas that some companies aren't using but they should be using. Um, for example, Bolon do take back their samples and they recycle them. Companies like Swatchbox um, deliver all of your samples at once and um, uh, that 
saves on um, and they take them back. So it also saves on delivery and um, packaging. So there are certain, there are already companies out there doing things, but it's your you who are the driving force. So you have to instigate it, and I think that's um, the position you should take. Using ethical or sustainable companies. This one can be a little bit more difficult because uh, sometimes you can't see or know where a manufacturer is uh, receiving all their sources from. However, a lot of companies who are sustainable or who have ISO certificates, they will proudly uh, uh, say that on their websites and um, will it will be part of their ethos. So these are companies that you want to be looking out for and start using, especially if um, you're used to using particular companies in the past and um, you don't see them uh, making a change uh, for the better. So I would consider uh, making uh, or keeping an open mind and constantly researching companies who are making uh, a positive change. This is something we do uh, in uh, our graduate platform, Into Design. We have a whole uh, sourcing list and one uh, that is worldwide and um, it's continuously growing because we're adding uh, all these sustainable um, companies that we've used and that our students use. And it's just an invaluable resource, which is um, inspiring to see because as more companies are added, we see um, how many people and how many companies are really, really taking this seriously. So you can do this for yourself. You can um, start a, a directory of uh, sustainable companies that um, – could be your first option of uh, sourcing to go to. So when looking for um, uh, uh, furniture or finishes, you could go straight to your preferred list, which is uh, the companies who are ethical or sustainable. Being conscious about how you deal with samples. This we've already touched on uh, lightly, but it really deserves its own uh, section, mainly because this is part of the process of being an interior designer and how we design. So this does take a little bit of getting used to and changing. And I think this is also something that um, manufacturers can do to help us as designers by providing high quality imagery that we're able to use for our mood boards or digital boards, because in many cases, we're getting used to digital media and we're trying, we are starting to understand light and how um, things can look, how different things can look on a screen as opposed to in real life. So these things uh, affect our design process. However, it makes us better designers because we can look at something in a digital color and then be able to make a decision just as easily. And I found that I've been able to adapt like this um, when I see something in real life and then digitally, I can kind of um, see if it's it's got a yellow tinge, maybe it was uh, taken indoors with a yellow light, or it's really, you, you start to see the differences in photography and filters and things. So if we uh, find a way to get higher quality imagery, um, I mean, that's one, one thing that I do, but I mean, there are other things you can do, especially... Um, thinking about sharing your samples with other designers that are local, um, like creating a co-op situation. Um, so, and like I also mentioned earlier, that you could um, do a, a sample day uh, and go and make decisions with your clients on site with um, uh, with the manufacturers, or get all of the manufacturers to come to your site, to the building site with their samples and then they can take them away or leave them on site and loan them to you for a little bit of time. These all require a bit of a change in our process and I think this is worth it because the amount of sample libraries I've seen in my lifetime, which I mean, I mean, even before I cleared out my sample library when we, we had to clear it out for uh, the baby, that was a whole room full of samples. We, it was our studio and it was cupboards and kilograms and kilograms of timber, tile, fabric. I mean, it was amazing quantities of stuff. And I mean, this is just my tiny little studio in 
Reading Berkshire. <laughs> so I can't imagine how many other interior design studios have tons and tons of samples that we have to replace um, because tiles go out of um, uh, they discontinue lines and this happens within a project so there's so many projects where I started on the project we, we chose a tile and then by the time the project actually got built um, because they didn't place orders and there were delays and you know two years later that tile doesn't exist anymore so um, you can imagine how quickly um, a tile library can go or a sample library can go out of um, um, can expire I suppose so finding innovative ways and I really want to open up this conversation because I think this is a really uh, it's it's a topic we need to discuss and see give each other ideas I think it's important to move forward uh, collaboratively and find a way of solving this problem of our design process which is really wasteful so to finish up I'd like you to make a decision to choose one, I mean, that's all you have to start with. Just choose one of these five things and see how you can really do it well and make a decision that this is the way that your interior design business is going to move forward now and that you're taking a stand for these things, whether it's packaging, whether it's upcycling, whether it's um, making uh, only working with sustainable uh, manufacturers or... Um, you know, dealing with samples. This is something that you can change and you can change it right now. So I would love you to make a decision and say it out loud, put it in the comments. Um, if you've read the blog post as well and wanted to download the, um, the downloadable, you can just uh, click through to the blog post and uh, get all the resources there. And let's move forward, make a decision today and see how we can start changing the industry. I'm Jo Crowback. I'm an architectural and interior designer and I run a mentorship program for interior designers who want to start a business. Uh, I also help interior designers who have no prior learning uh, be self-taught interior designers and work their way up the project scale by starting on small projects and uh, gaining experience that way. We also cover a lot of uh, uh, topics like sustainable design and um, sustainable business practices in my mentorship program. These are things that aren't really easily available in the industry yet. So if you would like uh, a mentor who is current in the industry and uh, really understands the processes and how they impact you as a designer, it would be a pleasure to have you.